My friends, today we're talking about the cage system for seventh chords or cage system for seventh chords explained. So you've probably asked yourself, can you do the cage system for seventh chords? And indeed, as I just showed, you can. And it is remarkably simple. If we understand this one small concept of how a seventh chord, in this case, a dominant seventh chord, is constructed. Okay, so very, very simple math. If you know this, you can take your cage system that you know already, you do know it already, right? Please do not watch this video unless you've watched my other cage video. Just search caged, your guitar sage, and then come back and watch this video. It's gonna make a lot more sense than just jumping in this right away, okay? Essentially, cage system is a way of explaining the chords using C, A, G, E, D, forms and playing them across the neck in such a way that gives us five possible ways, minimum of five ways to play these, these chords, okay? So for instance, a G major chord could be played G major, G, 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 but using all the different forms, okay? But we can do this also with seventh chords and minor chords. I have videos for that. So this is the one on the seventh chord. So here we go. So let's understand this for a moment, that a seventh chord or a dominant seventh chord is a major chord, a major triad, a one, three, five from the major scale. You know that major scale, right? Whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. You know it. If you don't, very first link below, access to the Unstoppable Guitar System, I'll teach it to you. That's a free course for you, by the way. So, you know that. I'm assuming you know that. So if we take the one, the three, and the five, one, two, three, four, five, we take the one, the three, and the five from that scale, and then we throw on top of it a little embellishment by the name of a flat seven, then what we get is we get a dominant seventh chord. So we have the one, the three, the five, here's the seven from the scale, but we're gonna flatten it. And so if we add all those notes together, here we have a one, here we have a five, here we have a, a flat seven, there's our three, and a couple other ones and fives in there. So basically, if we just take the octave of the G and we lower it a whole step, then my friends, we get our seventh chord. You can do this with any chord. So super easy, let's, let's do it. Here's our major chord. Here's the octave of the G. That's on the fourth string there. It's where my pinky's at. And if you're looking at the diagram, it is the green set of notes. Notice that the red note will denote where you're gonna place that, uh, that first finger, or at least in this case, it's gonna be where, where you're placing the, um, the tonic of the chord, okay? So we have our first form there. It's what we call our E form. And so in this case here, we're just lifting the pinky up, which means that the note a whole step behind it is being played. Easy enough. Now, if we were to play the next set of notes, which is what you're seeing as purple notes. So this is in the fifth position. Normally our D chord would be played something like this, not very comfortable, but the seventh version of it is a lot easier. So we're gonna take this note, drop it back a whole step, and now So there, which is incidentally, not incidentally, it's uh, exactly one octave up these four notes from these four notes. And that is our second chord form. We call that a D7 form because it looks like our D7 chord right down here. We're just moving it up to the fifth fret there, easy enough, right? Now, the next chord form you're gonna see is in the eighth position, okay? Eighth position, first finger's behind that eighth fret, and this is coming from our C7 chord formation. So here's our C, so if we want this to be a C7, we would add our pinky right there on the third fret of the third string. So what we're doing is we're taking that form, C, make a C7 and we're sliding it up to the eighth fret. 
because this, friends, as you're seeing on the 10th fret there of your diagram, it's red, that note's red, denoting that that's the, uh, the, um, the tonic. And so there's our chord right above it. So we have the G7, got the D7, we got the C7 feel. Okay, now off the same note, we can toggle the A7. We get this from the A7 version. So if I free up that first finger and play it like this, I also can slide that up all the way up to the G. Or take the A7 right here, which is the octave of this guy, and drop it back a whole step. So there's our A7 form. And then lastly, and now again, what we did is we just take that major form, and we drop that guy back a whole step. That's what we got there. Okay. And then lastly, we've got the G7 form. Here's G major, here's G7, or one of the many ways that we can play G7. So technically, if we took that, and we freed up that first finger so that we can move it on up the fretboard. And technically, this guy is moving all the way up, one octave up to the 12th fret, and that is our G7 chord. Now, technically, we would not play all six strings, especially all the way up the fretboard like that. We probably wouldn't. It's not to say you couldn't, but guitar players play what's comfortable, too. They don't always just try to be a, uh, you know, uh, just torture here on your hands. Uh, so what you want to do is just take, as I teach in all my cage videos, take the portion of the chord that you want. What I like to do is I just take the bottom four strings. So as I'm playing that in the intro of this video, I did this. I didn't play strings five and six because there's just no need to. Number one, it's very uncomfortable, and then two, it's not really adding anything to it, in my opinion. If you wanna do it, then add it. So easy enough, friends. Cage system for seventh chords is right there in front of you. Now, friends, I know some of this is over your head. Please watch that cage system before, the, the, the regular cage system video that I have for you before this one, because uh, it's gonna be too confusing if not. I'm here to help you. I know some of these, things go over your head. If you don't have those fundamentals, I want to provide those for you and they will be available. They're available for you right now. Very first link below will give you access to the Unstoppable Guitar System Standard. I've had over a half a million, go, half a million folks go through this already and it's really helped their guitar lives. I wanna help you as well. So that's what to do. Click on that link or if you're watching on mobile and you need some help, text me. 833-744-0154 and to that number, text free, F-R-E-E, -E, and I will set you up with the course, okay? It's that simple. Also, friends, if you want this beautiful shirt or any other swag that we have over at yourguitarsage.com, hit the merch page. That's right, yourguitarsage.com, and then click on merch. We got all sorts of uh, fun swag there. Friends, I'm here to help you. Please let me know how I can do it because I'm very passionate about teaching guitar and I love doing it. So please let me know those comments below. Also, hit like notification bell, uh, subscribe, all videos, just the whole enchilada. If you want videos from me, I'm here to help. Friends, as always, be kind to all beings, do the right thing always, practice your guitar. I'll see you in the next video.